Well, let me pray, um, and then we'll get started. Okay, guys? God, I thank you so much, Lord, for today and everything you've done, God. I pray that, uh, that as we worship you, God, I pray that our, our intentions be pure, that we be focusing on the right thing, that we be uh, simply trying to grow closer to you, simply trying to worship you, simply trying to 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 exalt you above ourselves, above our time, above our boyfriends or girlfriends or our phone or whatever else, God. And we're just going to totally devote this time to you, Lord. Help us to just love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, everybody. We're just going to go ahead and sing one song, just like we've been doing in the past. Josh will come up and we'll sing two more. So sing really loud.
very sorry. All right. That's it. It's pretty intense. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this bed is somewhat dangerous now. We can act it out. Yeah. Yep, let's now, do Nate, this. I run over here real quick and get on it. <laughs> I, was, I was standing right here, and Nate had one of those big plastic bats, and he tried to throw it on yeah. my feet. It's really good. TV. He hit the ground, bounced straight up, and hit that metal vent. And the vent came down, and a bunch of this. Well, it was hanging. It was hanging about this far. Yeah. It was hanging six it's inches for like 30 seconds. We're like, oh, that's really weird. We're that's cool. Get boom, and it all comes down. Uh, yeah. There was a lot of mold. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they put a chair on the table. We're just doing it. Not very good. Okay. Not very good. All right. Did Josh fix it? Yeah. Yeah. So cute. I don't know if this is fixing. More of temporarily. Just watch out. And I'm not responsible. Huh? Now we're in there. That they're avoiding. Watch out, Hunter. All right, guys. All right, guys. What did we talk about last week? What did we talk about last week? I was not here. We learned about baseball. No, it was two weeks ago. Kind of, yeah. Thanks. What did we talk about? We talked about uh, spreading the gospel, kind of. We talked about how we love each other, and that's a way of spreading the gospel. Remember this? Do you remember this? No, I was absent. You were absent. <laughs> um, and then two weeks ago, we talked about baseball, right? We I talked about, do you get it? Just like if you either get baseball or you don't get baseball. <laughs> Nate did. He got bonus points. Um, what did we talk about three weeks ago? Oh, God. Oh, love. No, it was Liz. No. Love or Liz? Oh, yeah. Wait, hold on. We're not expected to remember. It was about how we're supposed to like, have God. Last year we yeah, it's got enough. <laughs> What? I said it last year we learned that. Three months ago. Um, what are we talking about three months ago? Love like Jesus. You don't even know. That's all. I'm back to get out. It's love like Jesus and love like Jesus. That's God. I think Good job. It's okay, so today we're going to talk about, today's a very simple lesson. It's going to be short, which is good because we're low on time, um, but you have to listen. That's the key to this whole thing. Yes? Um, today we're going to talk about how God talks. English. No? <laughs> Not necessarily. Actually, he may have never said an English word before. That's very possible. Huh? What did he say? We're going to learn. Everything. Huh? Everything. I bet he spoke everything. Yeah. <laughs> he can. He can speak everything. Because he's got to do anything. Um, in the Old Testament, how did God speak? Through prophets and angels. In Through us. And sometimes he spoke. I got it out. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably in Hebrew in the Old Testament. It was a good chance. Well, Jacob? Uh, I was being sarcastic. I said cool geniuses. All right. Um, so here's a question. Shh, shh. Kevin Clark. Why would you want to hear God's voice? Yes. It would make you feel better. It would make you feel better. That's possible. Why would you want to hear God's voice? Direction. Yeah, why would you want to hear God's voice? Not necessarily his voice, like audibly, but why would you want to hear from God? Why would you want something from God? Yeah, I was going to go with God. Comfort. Comfort? Yeah. Anything else? All right. Well, there's no wrong answers. 
Yeah. I guess there is Bible. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's eight. <laughs> um, but it's a number. All right, so we're going to talk about three things today. We're going to talk about uh, the ways that God talks, which are pretty obvious. We're going to talk about um, how we hear from God and what we need to do when we hear from God. So it should be pretty simple, yes? Um, first, how does God talk to us now? In the Old Testament, he talked by prophets, by dreams, by telling people, like audibly. How does he do it now? Not that he can't do those things. Um, the Bible, what else? Dreams. Yeah, dreams. They happen. What else? How else does God speak to you now? Um, songs. songs. Every day things. Bible. Bible, Every yeah. Headlines. Situations. What else? There's a big one. Green prayer. Nature. It can't be. Nature. What else? How does God speak now? It's part of the Trinity. The river. A river. The <laughs> Trinity <laughs> River. That's <laughs> actually how I got this lesson. I went out to the river. He told me. Really? Wait, what is it? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Oh. It's the Holy Spirit. God used the Holy Spirit to guide us. I didn't hear you. God used the Holy Spirit to guide us, to show us things, to speak to us. It's hot here. It's not. 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 Go to Psalms 161. Psalms 161. <laughs> All right, is everybody there? If you can't find it, it's right here. I am. Now, see one. Oh, I am. Shame on me. Oh, I just find it. I forget it. Psalms 116 1. Alright, it says this. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice, he heard my cry for mercy. So it says, uh, we're going to keep on going though, so that's not up there. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me, the anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the Lord, the name of the Lord, O Lord, save me. And basically he did. Uh, we're not going to read that whole thing. But basically this is the gist of it. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice, he heard my cry for mercy. God hears you. That's, that's the thing you want to get here. God hears you. When you pray to God, whenever you're doing anything, even if you're not praying, God hears you. He sees you. He knows what you're doing. He knows what you're going through. And he, I mean, it's not like you're praying for nothing. Have you ever had that feeling? Um, yes. Where you're just praying and you're like, am I just sitting here thinking things in my head or is it actually going to something? Um, and, and I've thought that before. And I still do occasionally. Um, you know, is God really listening? And and we're, give, we're guaranteed He is. God loves us. He wants to hear us. He wants us to speak to Him. And when we say things to Him, He is actually, it's not like a metaphor, God is actually hearing our, our prayers, even if they're in our head and they're silent. He's actually hearing our prayers. You understand that? Yes. Um, and He replies. Uh, he doesn't necessarily reply the same way that you talk to Him. But He does. He he guides you. He comforts you. He does those things um, because because that's what he does. He wants to do that for you, and that's the goal of praying. Um, and, and basically, understand he cares about you. He cares about you. 
He isn't just going to be like, oh, well, I've got bigger things. You matter. Never, I never want you to feel like, I'm saying these things to God, and He's hearing me, but, but He's got bigger things to worry about, and He'll deal with me later. You know, God is amazing and big and powerful, and He can deal with all of you at the same time, um, independently. And there's no way of grasping that, but God can, can talk to everybody, but not be corporate. It can be individual one-on-one. And I may have just gone over somebody's heads. That's okay. Can me explain that again, anybody? Huh? No? Okay. Well, then. All right, let's go to the next passage. It's going to be quick because we have two more songs. John 10, 27. Here's the big part of this lesson. If you want to hear from God, if you want to, to get direction, if you want comfort from God, if you want to understand what you're supposed to be doing in life, if you want to understand, you know, what your purpose is, if you want to know what decision to make, if you want to um, decide, you know, anything, if you want to go to God with anything, and I recommend going to God with everything, um, then this, this is going to be a big verse. John 10, 27. I always forget to look it up myself. John 10, 27. My sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Um... That's what it says. My sheep know my voice, and they know me. I know them, and they follow me. Do you understand what that means? We don't, we're not a lot of shepherds these days, so this is kind of a illusion is a little gone. <laughs> what? But sheep, sheep are not the smartest animal. Um, and not that I'm comparing y'all to sheep, because y'all are smart. <laughs> <laughs> smart. <laughs> but um, but listen, whenever you're a shepherd and you have sheep, you spend your entire day with them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Whenever you're a shepherd, it's not like a part-time job. You don't go and spend time with the sheep and then you go home that night with your family. You sleep with the sheep. You're with the sheep. And for God to be our shepherd and for us to know him like the sheep know a shepherd, we have to be with God all the time. We have to know his voice. You know, the sheep didn't automatically know that the shepherd's voice. They're, they're not just born knowing it. It's from constantly hearing it, constantly knowing how, how the shepherd talks. And the sheep, which is us in this illusion, know how he speaks. And so if you want to know more about God, if you want to know more about how he speaks, what you have to do is you have to be with God more. You know, that's the whole point of fasting, or one of the many points of fasting. How many of you know what fasting is? Fasting is basically when you abstain <coughs> from something for religious purposes. Um, yes? You said again. Keep coughing. <laughs> what are you? Sorry. Something coughing. Fasting is whenever you abstain from something for religious purposes. Traditionally, it's food, um, but our culture today makes it a lot of things, which isn't bad necessarily. Um, I have fasted before from Facebook, um, from my cell phone and stuff. It's basically saying during this time, <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Are you okay, Chance? <laughs> All right, but really during that time, during that time of, of fasting, I would search for God. I would be with him completely. Like I wouldn't spend the time that I was on Facebook. I would spend that time in the Word. Or I'd spend time that I'd be texting Jessica or whatever else. I would spend that time reading or praying or something. I would be with God more often. Um, and that's, that's the point. That's just one of the many points of fasting. And a lot of us have to do that. Not, not necessarily fast. But we're not spending enough time with God. We don't recognize his voice. So if he tells us something, whenever we get older and we're about to graduate and go to college and we don't know where we're going to go, and, you know, we don't know God's voice. He may be telling you what to do, but you're not recognizing it because you haven't been with, you, haven't, you don't know God's voice. You haven't been with God. You haven't been listening to God this whole time. And now you're asking for something. Now you're in danger, like, like a sheep gets in danger, and it can't recognize the shepherd's voice. It doesn't know where to go. It just hears a random voice and doesn't know it's, it's the shepherd's. And, and that's a scary thought. Um, 
Let's do this last, last point right here. Uh, John 14, 21. John 14, 21. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to them. Um, or him. Basically, this means... That's not right. Wait, maybe it is. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're given something from God... If you're given direction, if you're given comfort, if you're giving something from God, you need to obey it. And that's basically the point here. I don't think I need to go too much into detail of that. When you're given something from God, there's many reasons why you're supposed to obey it. One, because it shows love to God, and you're supposed to, yes? You're supposed to obey God. And two, because He knows what's best for you. God knows what's best for you. When He tells you to do something, He's not telling you to do something out of, out of vain, out of, out of something that He wants. But it's what's honestly best for you. You know, when you go to God for something, make sure that you're going to God for, out of a pure heart, for, for non-selfish reasons. Because you may not necessarily like what, what he tells you to do, but you have to do it. You know, and, and we struggle with that as, as Christians. You're going to struggle with that your whole life, of God telling you to do things you don't necessarily want to do, but you know that you're supposed to do it. And you have to come to the point where it's like, okay, God, I love you, and I'm going to do it. I recognize your voice, and I'm not going to ignore it. I'm going to do what you've called me to do. So, how this all relates to um, live, well, live like Jesus, love like Jesus. Anybody know? Our whole theme is live like Jesus, love like Jesus. We have to love like Jesus for Jesus to love like Jesus. No? No, he already knows that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jesus loves us regardless. Anybody? Does anybody know how this relates? Live like Jesus. Live like Jesus. Yeah. To. Chance to go. To, to live like Jesus, to love like Jesus, we have to do like Jesus did, which is to seek after God, to get insight from Him, which is what the next verse is. Luke 5.16. Luke 5.16 says, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. You know, and the question is, are you doing that? You know, is this, is this lesson relevant to you? And, and it could be either really good or really bad this lesson isn't relevant to you. One, because you've already got it down. Or two, because you don't pray enough. And, and it's obviously it's good that you've already got it down. But if you're struggling, if you're not putting si time aside to pray like Jesus did, you're not living like Jesus. I mean, it's pretty simple. If you're not looking for discernment on every decision, no matter how small or how big, then, then you're, not, you're not really... Living like Jesus, loving like Jesus. You know, Jesus knew his Father's voice, yes? He knew it better than any of us did. And that should be our goal, is to know God's voice. You know, God works in, in, in great ways, and, and not always the same ways. Um, you know, there are times that God has spoke to me, and it's been more of a, like, this is the only option. Like, I've had all these... I don't know, um, like what college I'd go to. I only applied to two colleges. I applied to Rice and U of H. Um, I was top 3% of my class, so I could have gone anywhere, so I didn't really see a point of applying if anyone was going to get in. Um, but I applied to two colleges. I didn't really know where to go. And, you know, that's God answered my prayer by not letting me get accepted to Rice. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's as simple as that sometimes. I prayed to God where I go to college. I didn't get into one, and I got into U of H. Um, so I went there. And then other times, it, it could be different. You know, God works in different ways. There are a lot of times that, that God just works, and you're praying, and you're praying, and you're praying, and it seems like God never really answers the prayer. 
never really tells you what to do, never really comforts you, but it kind of just happens. Have you ever had that? Where you're like, okay, what do I do here? What do I do here? And the time comes, it's closer and closer and closer, and then you find yourself that you've just done one or the other. Like everything has been set up so that this is where what happens, and it's easiest, and it flows through. That's, that's another way God talks. Whenever, uh, whenever Doug, who was my youth pastor, left, obviously he was praying you know, extensively about whether he should go to the other church or stay here. And the way that, that or one of the many ways that his prayers were answered, by everything just lining up. You know, the, his wife's uh, school, uh, dental schooling, worked out perfectly where there was only one spot left in the college in Tyler, which, which is where they went. Um, the house stuff worked out perfectly. Everything just worked out perfectly. And that was another way God talks, is through, through situations. But regardless... You need to know what's from God. And God's consistent. God, God isn't necessarily consistent in his methods, but he's never going to tell you something that, that is just wrong. Um, God, God is, by definition, perfect and, and great and holy. And you can't do things that are unholy. And so that's part of, of getting to know God, is, is knowing who he is, knowing that this is who God is. God's not somebody who's going to tell me to cheat on my test. God's somebody who's going to tell me, you know, study before, be responsible. And that's all throughout the Bible. To be prepared, to not be a fool, to be smart, be wise. You know, God is, is going to answer your questions, but he's not necessarily going to do it audibly. He's not going to tell you what to do audibly very often, if ever. And you have to know his voice, know what he sounds like, know what he is. And, and ultimately, you just have to pray more. Take time, go away and pray. You know, that was that was my favorite thing about cross country. Um, was that you have about 30 minutes to run, and there's nobody there. You just run and run and run, and, huh? In the last place. <laughs> <laughs> I was so far ahead. <laughs> 30 minutes? <laughs> 30 minutes, 30 minutes in first place. No, we run like five miles, so 30 minutes. No, you don't. Whoa. 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 I feel pretty confident that you were not in my cross country team. <laughs> so I, I know what we did, you know. <laughs> Alright, listen, guys. Guys, but really, that's, that's great. I mean, whenever I had that time to just go and be away, and you need to have that. Because Jesus had that, and we're going to live like Jesus, we're going to love like Jesus. You need to have that. Why? 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 Right. Quiet, listen, listen, guys. This needs to be important, and, and I'm done. Right, I'm about to be done, so the Walters can come up. Um, and there's not necessarily an invitation or something you need to work on, other than it needs to be a priority. Prayer needs to be a priority in your life. You know, it's not just something we do as Christians. It's not just some tradition. It's you're talking to God, and He wants to hear from you. He wants to help you. He wants to be there to uh, to comfort you, to help you, to guide you. He loves you more than anything. I promise you. He loves you more than anything, and He wants to talk to you. All you've got to do is, is take time and say, Hey, I can make time for the God of the universe. Which, when you think about it, that's kind of sad. That the God of everything, who sent His Son to die for us, we struggle to find time to pray and talk to him. And I'm not necessarily trying to, you know, necessarily make you feel bad, but that's, that's sad. And God's not up there being like, oh, I died for them. They should pray to me more often. He's just asking, you know, come to me. He wants to help you. He loves you. So if you want to, you know, take that as your invitation, then you know, that's fine. Uh, you could pray about that. You could do whatever you want. Um, we're going to sing the songs few songs will be done, um, but I encourage you to, to make prayer priority in your life. Make it something that it's not just, not just something you do before you eat or, you know, before you get in your car to drive, if it's your first week of your license. You know, prayer is, is, is a tool, and it's great, and it can be used for so many things, but you have to do it right. You have to know God's voice so that you can hear his response have to take the time and have the right heart and come to him and say, God, I love you and I want to learn from you. Um, so I encourage you to, to pray because this will be a great time. Nobody's going to distract you.
uh, or you can sing, sing I Can Only Imagine, the beautiful one, and it'll be done. Uh, God, I thank you so much, Lord, for everything you've done, God. I pray that, that these students, um, that they know your voice, God, that they, that they just have been in your presence so much, and they've spent time just quietly sitting down and praying to you, Lord. I pray that that be something that they're, they're practicing, God. I know that you gave us that example by saying your son, who, who often went away and prayed, God, um, who sought your will, who even though he was perfect, came to you, God, and still talked to you, Lord. And if, if for whatever reason we think that, that you're just someone we confess our sins to, or you're just someone that's going to help us with little things or help us when our mom's sick or something, God. And I pray that that stereotype be broken and that we realize that, God, you are amazing. You love us and you want to hear from us, Lord. You want us to, to talk to you, God. And you want us to be able to understand what you're saying, God, whether it be through a train of thought that we just can't get out of our head or through situations or through somebody that you've sent to say something to us, God, or the Bible even, Lord. I pray that we be so familiar with how you work and so familiar with, with who you are and what you do, God, that, that we can't help but to, to know that something's from you, God. I hope us have an awesome week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <coughs>
got one more song. Don't be afraid to get uh, loud on this one. Then we'll go ahead and be dismissed. Not too crazy. <clears throat> Keep your friends that, like, tell your friends that too, because otherwise I'll take more.